Hola and welcome to Pro Spanish. In a few seconds you'll be able to experience for yourself just how quickly and easily you can learn Spanish. But before that, there's some really good news for all of you completing levels one to six. We've got this brilliant new resource on the site that will make a real difference to your ability to understand spoken Spanish. It's free to use. So you would just head over to the site, so prospanish.co.uk, go down to the listenings, choose the level that you're on. Uh, we'll go for level one. Okay, so we have some great functions here, which will really help you with your um, listening skills. So we can choose first for which lesson we're on. Uh, let's go to lesson 10. And then if you're new to Pro Spanish, you can see just how much you'll have learned by then. Uh, this practices the language that you've studied up to that point, incorporating everything. Uh, we can choose Spain Spanish or Latin American Spanish. if We want a different pronunciation. And here, this is the... Um, the pause, the time that you have to come up with the with the translation. So let's just put it down to four seconds. You could just use the pause button here. And this uh, function here, very, very useful. So one is natural Spanish speed, and we can reduce down. So let's put it at 0.8, slow it down slightly. Okay, and we'll, let's have a listen. Tenemos que decirle la verdad. So, tenemos que decirle la verdad. We need to work out what that means in English. We have to tell him the truth. And that, there's the answer. We have to tell him the truth. Me encanta salir en España. And we'll just pause there so we can just pause it. Me encanta salir en España. And we've got four seconds or whenever we resume to come up with what that means in English. So, this really will give a big boost to your ability to understand spoken Spanish. Once you set it up for the settings that suit you, then just press start and work your way through the exercises. And so let's get straight down to our learning now. Uh, for our more advanced subscribers, you may wish to skip straight to the advanced part of this video uh, or stick around for the extra practice. So I'm going to start by introducing some verb phrases. Uh, it's important to stress that you don't need to try to memorize these. You don't need to make a special effort to remember them. You will know them by the end, but all you need to do is to listen and notice the things that I point out and you'll automatically remember them by the end. Okay, so first of all, we're going to say to take Pablo to the station. So it's llevar a Pablo a la estación. Llevar a Pablo a la estación. So to take. Llevar actually means to carry. To carry. So we're going to carry Pablo to the station. But llevar, in this context, we would say to take. So llevar a Pablo a la estación. And you can see estación, station. So to take Pablo to the station. Next, we're going to return something to a shop. So, to take something back to a shop. Devolver algo a una tienda. Devolver algo a una tienda. So, devolver, to take back. Devolver algo, to take back something or to return something. A una tienda, to a shop. Debo ver algo a una tienda, to take something back to a shop. Seguir el camino is next. Seguir el camino. Seguir is to follow. Seguir el camino, the path. Seguir el camino, to follow the path. Next, we have ser amable. Ser amable. Ser is to be. Amable is kind or nice. So, to be nice or to be kind. Ser amable. Ser amable. To be nice. Dejarlo en la mesa is to leave it on the the table. To leave it on the table. Dejar, without the lo, is to leave. Dejarlo 
is to leave it. Dejarlo en la mesa, to leave it on the table. Terminarlo, we can see the lo again there, the it. So terminarlo is to finish it. Terminarlo, to finish it. Okay, let's go back over some of those. So what was the word for station? Can you find station? Estación. To the station. A la estación. To the station. A la estación. And can you see the verb that is to return, to take back? Devolver. Devolver. So, devolver, to take back, to return. And can you see the word for to be? Ser. Ser. And to be nice, so nice or kind is amable. Amable. Ser amable. To be nice. And can you see the word for to finish? It's terminar. Terminar is to finish. To finish it. Terminarlo. Terminarlo. OK, let's move along now. And we'll start off with something nice and easy. Mañana, tomorrow. Mañana, tomorrow. Then we're going to say this night. Normally we would say tonight. So this night, esta noche. Esta noche, this night. Esta noche. So tonight is esta noche. And last night, it's also got the word noche in it for night. And last night is anoche. Anoche, last night. And let's also add in there as soon as possible. Lo antes posible. Lo antes posible. Antes actually means before. So as before as possible. So the earliest possible. So as soon as possible is what we would translate it as. Lo antes posible. OK, let's just see if we can use these two columns together a second. Um, how would we say to take... Pablo to the station tomorrow. What would that be? Llevar a Pablo a la estación mañana. Llevar a Pablo a la estación mañana. To take Pablo to the station tomorrow. How about to finish it as soon as possible? What would that be? Terminarlo lo antes posible. Terminarlo lo antes posible. So to finish it as soon as possible. OK, let's go to our first final column. Nice and easy, the first one. I need, necesito. I need is necesito. I can is Puedo, puedo, I can, puedo. I decided, so we're able to use the past as well. I decided, it's nice and easy, and it's decidi, decidi, I decided. And again, you don't need to hold these in your, in your head, you don't need to memorise them. So, decidi, I decided. And next up is, it was difficult. So this is very useful. It was difficult. Fue, so that's the it was. Fue difícil. Fue difícil. It was difficult. It was hard. And then we're going to finish with, you have to. Tienes que. Tienes que. Tienes is you have. You have to as in you must. Tienes que. Que tienes que. Okay, first up, we're going to build up some sentences by working across. Okay, uh, this will get you familiar with the language before the next phase. 
And you'll see, see how we're not just learning vocabulary here. Obviously, it is very useful vocabulary that you can use immediately. But the point is as well is the structure. And as we layer up, as we build more and more, uh, obviously your ability to communicate becomes much closer to conversational. So let's start with I need. And when you're asked to find or to come up with a phrase, uh, I'll leave a pause, but you'll probably need longer. So make sure you pause the video if you need to. So I need is necesito. I need to finish it. Necesito terminarlo. I need to finish it tonight. Necesito terminarlo esta noche. Necesito terminarlo esta noche. Okay, let's try another one. You have to. Tienes que. You have to be nice. It's a bit like you have to to be nice. That's how the structure works. Tienes que ser amable. You have to be nice tomorrow. Tienes que ser amable mañana. Tienes que ser amable mañana. I decided. Decidí. I decided to follow the path. Decidí seguir el camino. I decided to follow the path last night. Decidí seguir el camino anoche. Decidí seguir el camino anoche. How about I can? Puedo. I can take Pablo to the station. Puedo llevar a Pablo a la estación. I can take Pablo to the station tomorrow. Puedo llevar a Pablo a la estación mañana. Again, puedo llevar a Pablo a la estación mañana. A quick pause there while I mention our very popular Levels 1 to 6 course. This takes the complete beginner or a near beginner right up to a conversational level of Spanish in a series of very easy to follow steps. All the lessons on this YouTube channel are supplementary, whereas the core levels one to six is very much a step-by-step -step program delivered by the same teacher as all the other videos on the Pro Spanish YouTube channel. And while the style is very similar to what you'll be used to from these videos on the channel, the key difference is that every lesson carefully builds on the previous lessons so that you can really feel that progress of going from very little or no Spanish up to a level where you can confidently hold a conversation in Spanish. So again, that's available exclusively from prospanish.co.uk. Okay, in this next phase, just listen, follow along, and try to work out what the sentence is. Fue difícil ser 
amable anoche. Fue difícil ser amable anoche. And that was, it was difficult to be nice last night. Okay, next. Tienes que dejarlo en la mesa esta noche. Tienes que dejarlo en la mesa esta noche. Okay, so you have to leave it on the table tonight. Okay, next. Necesito devolver algo a una tienda lo antes posible. Necesito devolver algo a una tienda lo antes posible. So, I need to return something to a shop as soon as possible. Okay, next. Decidí llevar a Pablo a la estación anoche. Decidí llevar a Pablo a la estación anoche. Okay, last one in this phase. Puedo terminarlo mañana. Puedo terminarlo mañana. I can finish it tomorrow. Now for this next part, try to make the Spanish sentence, say the Spanish sentence yourself. Uh, use the table as much as you want, uh, but if you can, just start to try to look away and recall some of the um, some of the structures. Okay, so how would you say, I need to be nice tonight? What would that be? I need to be nice tonight. Necesito ser amable esta noche. Necesito ser amable esta noche. How about, it was difficult to follow the path last night. Fue difícil seguir el camino anoche. Fue difícil seguir el camino anoche. Don't forget to pause the video if you need some extra time to come up with the answer. And how would we say, you have to finish it as soon as possible? Tienes que terminarlo lo antes posible. Tienes que terminarlo lo antes posible. Okay, now we know that I need is necesito, puedo is I can. What would it mean if I said, no necesito? It would be, I don't need. What about if it was, no puedo? I can't. What about if it was, no fue difícil? It wasn't difficult. So we just put no at the beginning to change it to a negative. So how would we say, it wasn't difficult to finish it last night? What would that be? No fue difícil terminarlo anoche. No fue difícil terminarlo anoche. How would you say, I can't 
take Pablo to the station tonight. No puedo llevar a Pablo a la estación esta noche. No puedo llevar a Pablo a la estación esta noche. How about I don't need to leave it on the table tonight. No necesito dejarlo en la mesa esta noche. No necesito dejarlo en la mesa esta noche. And as I was saying earlier, it's not specifically, although it's very useful, the vocabulary that we're doing now, it's not specifically about that. It's about the flexibility that we're getting with this kind of approach. So let's say, for example, we've got fue difícil. It was difficult. It was hard. By knowing this, we can very quickly multiply what we're able to communicate. So you could probably even guess if I say, so fue difícil is it was difficult. What about if I said fue importante? What would that be? Fue importante. It was important. What about fue fantástico? It was fantastic. What about fue terrible? It was terrible. How about no fue posible? No fue posible. It wasn't possible. So taking fue importante, it was important. Fue importante seguir el camino. It was important to follow the path. Fue imposible ser amable. What do you think that was? Fue imposible ser amable. It was impossible to be nice, given the situation. So you can see how quickly we can multiply our language with this kind of approach. And just before we move on to the more advanced part for our advanced subscribers, another quick reminder that the Pro Spanish Levels 1 to 6 course is available exclusively from prospanish.co.uk. Vale, bienvenidos a la parte más avanzada de este video. Vamos a continuar con mucho del lenguaje de la clase anterior. Entonces, llevar a Pablo a la estación. To take Pablo to the station. Devolver algo a una tienda. To take something back to a shop. Seguir el camino. To follow the path. Ser amables. Entonces, hay un cambio. Ahora es plural. Ser amables. To be nice but for more than one person. Dejarlo en la mesa, to leave it on the table. Terminarlo a tiempo, otra vez un cambio, to finish it on time. Y vamos al principio. Lo hice, I did it. Y lo dije, I said it. Lo dije, I said it. Y en medio vamos a usar la estructura so that, so that. Y siempre después de so that, después de para qué, para qué es siempre subjuntivo. ¿Vale? Entonces vamos a hacer so that they could. Para que pudieran. Para que pudieran. So that they could. Después, para que ayudaran a. So that they helped to. In English, we would tend to use this structure. We'll see in a minute in a, in a sentence. We would probably say, so that they would help to. But it's for the moment, it's just para que ayudaran a, so that they helped to. Para que 
tuvieran que, so that they had to, para que tuvieran que, so that they had to. You'll notice that these subjunctives, they're the imperfect subjunctive, so the past uh, version, para que tuvieran que, so that they had to. And then finally, para que se disculparan por no. Okay, a bit of a mouthful, but very useful. So that they apologized for not doing something. So that they apologized, or again, so that they would apologize for not, whatever it might be. Ahora con el contexto uh, se podrá entender un poco mejor. Bien, pues unos ejemplos para empezar. Lo hice para que pudieran seguir el camino. Lo hice para que pudieran seguir el camino. I did it so that they could follow the path. ¿Y qué significa esta frase? Lo dije para que se disculparan por no terminarlo a tiempo. Lo dije para que se disculparan por no terminarlo a tiempo. I said it so that they apologized. We would say so that they would apologize for not finishing it on time. I said it so that they would apologize for not finishing it on time. Lo hice para que tuvieran que llevar a Pablo a la estación. Lo dije para que tuvieran que llevar a Pablo a la estación. I said it so that they would have to take Pablo to the station. ¿Vale? Ahora te toca a ti. ¿Cómo sería? I did it so that they would help to finish it on time. Lo hice para que ayudaran a terminarlo a tiempo. Lo hice para que ayudaran a terminarlo a tiempo. How about, I did it so that they could follow the path. Lo hice para que pudieran seguir el camino. Lo hice para que pudieran seguir el camino. Y en vez de el camino, podríamos decir la clase. Lo hice para que pudieran seguir la clase. I did it so that they could finish, so that they could follow the class. ¿Y cómo sería? I said it so that they would apologize for not taking Pablo to the station. Lo dije para que se disculparan por no llevar a Pablo a la estación. Lo dije para que se disculparan por no llevar a Pablo a la estación. How about, I did it so that they would apologize for not being nice. Lo hice para que se disculparan por no ser amables. Lo hice para que se disculparan por no ser amables. How about, I did it so that they would have to follow the path. Lo hice para que tuvieran que seguir el camino. Lo hice para que tuvieran que seguir el camino. How about, I did it so that they would have to be nice. 
lo hice para que tuvieran que ser amables. Lo hice para que tuvieran que ser amables. And that concludes today's pro-Spanish lesson. As mentioned earlier, if you're looking to become a confident and a competent speaker of Spanish, head over to prospanish.co.uk where you can download the full Levels 1 to 6 course.